Okay, so this is a video explaining how to solve an equation, in particular how to solve an, an equation with fractions in them. So I'm going to start off on the basics of solving equations. So this letter here, the letter X, represents a variable as you know. Now a variable is a letter, it doesn't have to be X, it could be any letter, but it's a letter that represents a number. So sometimes I like to think of it as a little placard. So if you pull, pull the placard away, it reveals a number. So think of it as a mystery number. You don't know what the number is. And usually when you're asked to solve an equation, you're asked to actually find out what that number is, the value of x. Now, second thing we're going to look at here is 2x. Well, most of you probably know this, but some people don't get this. So 2x means 2 times x. So let's say x was equal to 3. Well, then that will be 2 times 3, which is 6. Now, here's an example of a very, very simple equation. 2 plus x equals 4. And you don't have to be Einstein to figure that one out. x is obviously 2 in this case. Now, that's very easy. You can figure it out in your head straight away. But what happens when you get an equation that looks like this? That's something that I know I can't figure that one out straight away. Maybe if I thought about it a little bit, I could. And there are certainly are people who can do that. But uh, most people, most normal people, um, can't do it. So we need to have a method of solving this equation. So that's what I'm going to talk about now. First of all, I'm going to look at uh, ar arithmetical equations here. So there's no letters involved, no x's, so it's not algebra, but it, it is going to help us figure out how to solve equations. So first of all, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 1 to both sides of this equation. So here you've got 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and here you've got 4 plus 1 is 5. So what happens there is when you add a number to both sides of an equation, it doesn't change, uh, at least the equation still holds true. So 5 equals 5 is still a true equation, isn't it? So the next thing I'm going to try is subtracting a number from both sides. So let's subtract 3 from both sides. So that's 2 plus 2 is 4 minus 3 is 1. 4 minus 3 is 1. So again you see that the equation still holds true. So, um, as you can imagine, we're going to do this as well uh, with division. So, we're going to divide both sides by 2. So, 2 plus 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So, again, the equation still holds true. And finally, as you, as you might guess, we're going to multiply. So, let multiply by 3, for example. So, here we have 3 times 2 plus 2 is 4. So, 3 fours is 12 and 4 trees is 12 as well. Okay, so what that tells us is that you can add, subtract, divide or multiply a, a number by both sides of an equation and that equation will still hold true. And this is the key fact that you need to know to be able to solve equations. So let's look at a very simple algebra equation. 5x plus 4 equals 14. So remember what I said, if you want to solve an equation, at the end of the day, you want to find out what that mystery value x is. So your, your answer at the end of the day is going to be x equals a number. So you want to go from this position to something very simple, x equals a number. So the way you do that is you, one by one, you pick off the numbers on the left-hand side here to leave, you, leave yourself with just an x. So you start off with the number that's not next to the x, so this number here. And we want to get rid of that number, and the way we get rid of it is we subtract 4 here. But if we do it here, we have to do it on the other side, remember? Because we know we can subtract from both sides of an equation, and the equation would still hold true. So plus 4 minus 4 cancels out, that equals to 0, so we're left with 5x on the left-hand side, and 14 minus 4 is 10. So 5x equals 10. So as you can see, we're, we're um, getting closer to our answer. All we need to do now is get rid of that 5. So what we do, how we get rid of that 5? Very simple, we just divide by 5. Because 5 divided by 5 is, is just equal to 1. So you're left with 1x. But if we divide by 5 here, we also have to do it over here. Okay, so that leaves us with, on the left-hand side, 1x, or just x. 
and then the right hand side 10 divided by 2 or 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2 so there you see we've got the answer x equals to 2 and all we did to, to, to solve that e equation was to use that basic law that we can add, subtract, divide or multiply both sides of an equation and that equation would still be true. Okay, so now we're going to deal with equations with fractions in them. Now there's a number of ways you could do this problem. You could start off by getting rid of the 4, but generally speaking, when I have an equation with fractions in it, the first thing I always want to do is get rid of those fractions because they, that, what, that's what kind of complicates the whole process. So, very simple way of getting, getting rid of a fraction is simply multiply the equation by a number that that fraction will divide into. So 3, the denominator here will divide into 3, obviously. So if we multiply the whole equation by 3, which we know we're allowed to do, so we have to multiply every term by 3. That's important. Okay, so now we can just simply cancel that out. 3 goes into 3 once. So we're left with 8x plus, and then this will be 3 times 4, which is 12. And this one is 3 times 8, which is 24. So you can see there, we've gotten rid of the fraction straight away, and, and now it seems an awful lot simpler. So just to finish this off, we're going to get now we're going to get rid of this 12. So we're going to go on minus 12 and minus 12 here. So that leaves us with 8x on the left hand side because these two guys cancel out. And 24 minus 12 is just 12. So now we're almost there. We just need to have x on its own. So we're going to get rid of the 8 by dividing by 8. And and we have to do it to both sides, remember? So 8 by 8 is just 1, so we're left with x equals 12 over 8. And we can just simplify that down by uh, dividing top and bottom by the, the highest number we can think of, which would be 4. So 4 into 12 is 3, and 4 into 8 is 2. So 3 over 2 are, in other words, 1.5. So x is equal to one and a half. Okay, so final example here is slightly more complicated one. In this case, we have three fractions involved. So but your, your first instinct might be just to multiply by three to get rid of the three, but that doesn't really help us with the four here. So what we gotta do is think of a number that all of these will cancel into. In other words, the lowest number that all of these denominators will divide into. So the lowest number obviously is 12. So I'm going to multiply everything by 12. So 3 goes into 12 4 times, 4 goes into 12 3 times, and 2 goes into 12 6 times. So we're left with 4 times 2x, which is 8x, minus, don't forget the minus, so 3x equals to 6 times 5 is 30. Okay, so we've got 8x minus 3x equals 30. Uh, 8x minus 3x is obviously 5x equals 30. So now all we have to do is get rid of the 5 here, so we're going to divide by 5 on both sides. So that leaves us with 1x, or x, equals to 30 divided by 5, which is 6. So there we've solved that equation. And the key thing to remember there is always try and get rid of the fraction first. And if you have a number of fractions, Think of the lowest number that all of the denominators, these guys underneath the lines, so that's a denominator, this one and this one. Think of the lowest number that all of these will go into, or divide into. So 3, 4 and 2 all divide into 12. That's the lowest number I can think of. So we use 12. And, and when, we, when we multiply 12 by the equation, we must, have, must multiply the 12 by each term in the equation. So here, here, and here. 
then we just cancel out and solve the equation as per usual.